Hello everybody. Today I'm going to work on restoring this pair of shoes. Now at first glance they may not really look very special. Um, at first glance they actually look pretty bad. They're pretty dingy, dirty, but if you are a vintage shoe enthusiast or you know anything about shoes, if I can zoom in a little bit, there is something very special about these shoes. You see there are no fine wrinkles. You see only these large rolls. What that means is these are made of Shell Cordovan. I'll link a video below if you're not sure what that means. The Shell Cordovan shoes um, basically will usually almost increase the price of a new shoe for about, you know, um, about, uh, you know, like 50% or so. So I'm going to try to restore these shoes. I don't know how far I'm going to get. I'm going to definitely, definitely clean them up as best I can. Uh, I'm going to put new laces in them. Um, I'm going to see, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to, but some of this stuff here is called uh, piping. And on one of the shoes uh, right there, I don't know if you can tell, the piping is torn. I'm going to see if I can maybe repair or replace that. Um, and over here as well. Um, these look like to me they have had new soles put on. I thrifted these shoes for $9. So I'm also going to most likely put new uh, heels for sure. Maybe soles. I don't know about that. There's some wear on the tips of the toes. Um, like I said, I want to get these things looking as close to new as I can. And this will be a big project because these things are filthy dirty. Okay, so let's go. Everybody's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of five. My shoe collection. Some stains there. Let's get a nice lather. Here is the finished product. I'm not a professional. How tight this is, though. You can see it very clearly here. I just cut the thread. So here it goes. Now that's a proper mirror shine. They're both done. Doesn't it look awesome? Anyone who's a fan of my channel at all or has seen some of my other before and after or shoe showcase videos, I mean, you know, especially the vintage stuff, that I really put a lot, a lot of effort. I actually enjoy research, um, you know, so it's really not painful or, you know, work to me. It, you know, I don't know if I sound nerdy, but uh, it really is, um, you know, pleasurable to me to research old shoes and try and find out what kind of shoes they are. So first of all, the soles is a, one of the first places you'd look and the insole would be one of the first places you'd look to try and determine, you know, the maker of a shoe. Okay, um, so first of all, the soles have been replaced. See Cat's Paws, an aftermarket, old aftermarket version of a heel brand. And Neolite is made by Goodyear. Um, so this, I believe, is actually a leather replacement. It's, it's made of rubber. Um, these shoes appear to be Goodyear welted. So it looks like to me a cobbler replaced the original soles with rubber, rubber sheet. So there's no um, you know, manufacturer marking on the sole. Um, the insole here is another key place where you usually see that. And a lot of the times the um, shoe manufacturer's logo just gets rubbed off by the foot. There's an, oftentimes an indentation left or inking or gold leaf. And I'm telling you, like I'm looking at this, not just, you know, obviously you guys see the video. But when I look at it live, there is next to nothing. I mean, maybe I'll examine it more and try and see if it, but I can't see anything on either insole. Most shoes, like Floor Shimes, Allen Edmonds, a lot of the vintage shoes, maybe not today's Floor Shimes, but will have on the inside here, okay, it will have a little patch um, where they put the, they sew in the manufacturer's logo. And as you can see on both sides, there's nothing. So there's not a single logo anywhere. The only thing I have to go on is the number here. So the shoe size there, that says 10 and a half D right there. Next to that, between looking at the both shoes, it's hard to tell, but that's 419547. And then it's really hard to read underneath that on this shoe. I don't know if it's really very visible. Um, I can't really see much. That looks like maybe a four there, but on this shoe, the bottom number is more visible and I can clearly, pretty clearly see that's either 6005 or 6035. Um, there is a number there now that I'm looking at it. So it's like a four, four C maybe. That's hard to tell what that number is. There's a number right there. Four, four, four C. It's hard to tell what that is. So what I went by was the uh, four, one, nine, five, four, seven, and the six, oh, oh, five or six, zero, three, five. I'm telling you, I probably got five, six hours of research into this. Um, here's some of the other distinguishing features. I was trying to find the maker. This medallion, I think, is a huge key. Now, if you see the medallion pattern, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six holes in a perfect, you see, it's a perfect triangle, okay? There's no hole in the middle. Do you see the pattern, that swoosh, swoosh, okay? And then here around this hole, it's not a circle, it's not a diamond, it is definitely like a football shape, okay? 
Also, the wingtip here, see how tall and pointed the wingtip is? Uh, this is called a long wing blucher. Now, you see the wingtip is all one giant piece of shell cordovan. That's another key. The eye stay, here's another key manufacturing feature. See, this is the eye stay here. Do you see how this row, double row of stitching there juts out halfway? Okay, and then it's stitched in this pattern. One, two, three, four, five eyelets. So, those are what I was looking for. Based on looking at the couple of uh, websites that are really good are vcleat.com and shellcordovanmodels.com. Um, but, so anyway, um, they're not Allen Edmonds um, because it doesn't have the logo on the inside. Um, it doesn't match any of the Allen Edmonds model numbers. And uh, because there's no logo on the insole, Allen Edmonds always prints them pretty heartily on the insole. Um, Allen, uh, I'm sorry, Alden doesn't match any Alden. There's no Alden logo on the insole um, or on the lining. Um, and, uh, you know, no model numbers. They have a ton of model numbers, but neither of those model numbers matched anything close. It's not a Bostonian because the model number doesn't match. No Bostonian logo. Um, the medallion pattern, that medallion doesn't match any Bostonians. I looked through their catalogs. Um, E.T. Wright, uh, nope, not Florsheim, definitely not Florsheim. Florsheim, uh, Shell Cordovan model numbers are very well documented, and they have a very similar medallion to that. They have a very similar medallion pattern, except there is always a hole, so this would be three holes right there. So it's not a, definitely not a Florsheim, not Footjoy, not Hanover that I could tell, um, um, not Johnson and Murphy. Johnson and Murphy always have a 2-4 dash model number um then four digits after that probably not lloyd and haig not Meerman, not bush not sears and robux i looked through so many of the sears catalogs from the mid 50s seriously because you can every sears robot catalog from like 1896 to now is online on uh, um, ancestry.com definitely not sears their model numbers are always started with there's a four digit number starting with a four or a um five digit number starting with seven or a few of them started with an eight so it just doesn't match up couldn't match your style with any of the shoes you know they couldn't get the right combination of medallion and you know etc could be a nettleton okay but nettleton's i don't know if you can see there most of the nettletons you see there on the eye stay had like a cross okay you can see it kind of in that one as well okay um, but they did have some you see this model it has that same kind of uh you know where it sticks out um so it could be a nettleton but it didn't match with any of the model numbers in shellcordovan.com uh that they say nettletons are all nettleton long wing bluchers were four digit model number beginning with zero two or four this one begins with a six so I'm very disappointed to say I have no idea who made them, but I'm hoping just by making this video, someone will recognize them. I'll um, uh, show you a couple pictures here. I did find one shoe on eBay that was being sold with the exact same pattern of medallion, no logo, similar model number, um, and this feature here. Although that guy didn't know what model his shoes were either. So um, like I said, hopefully this will help uncover something. Okay, thanks. shoe obviously has been worked on left shoe is still as factory can you tell the difference I think there's definitely a difference getting the gunk out of the holes getting the extra stuff off the surface I'm starting to see a red hue come out they're looking redder uh, less brown so I think it's starting to come around I'm seeing less and less come off the rag, so. So 
So I'm not necessarily going to film every bit of cleaning, but you see here I've got a relatively clean white cotton towel, a white t-shirt here, a little bit of the, the sapphire reno mat. And what I'm kind of doing, I'll, I'll hit this toe inside of the toe. Just scrubbing using, you know, it's fairly hard pressure. See, and it does pull stuff off. So that's what I'm trying to go by is when it quits pulling stuff off. I don't, I don't know how long that's going to take, but then I'm going to kind of turn it and you know, get a little bit of a fresher area. Hit it again. And I'm just doing this over and over. Let's see. Okay, so it's starting to come around. Um, here is the left shoe, the first shoe I started on. And this, uh, obviously, you saw that I used some acetone to strip it down. Um, I thought, felt like that was a little bit too harsh, so I stopped doing that. Um, and I used a lot of uh, re uh, the Reno Mat, Saphir Reno Mat, as a cleaner. It's got, like, some solvent in it because you can, you can definitely smell it. That worked really well. Um, and then what I did was I brushed them off really well. You saw me, you know, dig out the, you know, uh, the holes, um, the medallion. And then I slathered on the sapphire. Oh, son of a mother. Um, I sa slathered on the sapphire. Um, this is the Renovator. That's a mink oil based cleaner. And now they've had a chance for it to soak in. I really put it in, you know, pretty heavily. And they've been soaking in, you know, I don't know, probably about 30 minutes they've been just sitting here. So now I'm going to brush them off and let's see how they look.
And look at that. There's no polish on these yet. Color's starting to come out. They looked a brown, an ugly, dirt brown when I got them. And I am seeing that Color 8, these might be Color 8. Um, color 8 is a burgundy color. It's on the dark brown side with a definite reddish hue. Um, and in poor light will almost look black. And uh, I don't know exactly why it's color eight, but I guess when the color was formulated by the leather tanneries, it uh, might be Horween. Um, when they w formulated it, the, the tanneries, I guess they just never came up with a better color name and that name number stuck to today. So I think these are color eight. They're really starting to look good. So that's not bad, huh? Just side by side comparison. This one has been stripped, but not nourished. Again, this one has no polish on it. Okay, to polish them, I've got two choices of sapphire here. I have, on the right, I have a Bordeaux. On the left, I have mahogany. Um, the mahogany is on the browner side um, here. I'm definitely going to use the Bordeaux, which is on the purpler side, because that's the, I want to highlight, I want to bring out, I don't want to accent the red, I want to accent the, the purple hues, so I'm definitely going to go with this. Back to the right shoe, all that I did to this one was uh, loaded up with mink oil. And I'm gonna brush this off too. All right, here's the one that the, got polish on it. Let's see how this looks.
saddle soap on a toothbrush. Now here they are finished up. Um, so what I did, I didn't document everything on camera. Um, what I did was you see here the piping. Um, the piping, I took some of this uh, acrylic paint. And the reason is because the proper way to repair this, you can see I did it right there. And right here, I painted over it with acrylic paint. The proper way to do it would be to remove these, cut those stitches out. And they go to the inside of the shoe here, peel back the lining. And I'm not sure if that's leather or vinyl that wraps over it and redo it, but my skills just aren't good enough to do that. Number one, number two, that's going to be so intrusive, you know, to the lining of the shoe. I know you, with these old shoes, you risk tearing the lining right there. I just thought I'm going to do more damage than good. Obviously, this is a kind of repair that you'd want to, you know, when you're going to, you know, if you're going to give these shoes to somebody else, I'd want to, you know, sell them or whatever. I'd definitely want to disclose that. But... Um, I also took some saddle soap and, um, you know, cleaned off the welt there because that hadn't been cleaned, but I don't think they look too bad. The new laces, do you like those laces with the little silver ends on them? I thought those were kind of cool. The amazing thing about shell cordamon is just, you saw how beautiful the shell was just even before polish was applied. Now, one other thing, um, uh, I purposefully did not, you, you know, I'm like a fan of mirror shine, you know, I'd mirror shine suede if I could, uh, but, um, you know, I did not do a mirror shine on the toes. And my understanding is because shell cordovan, apparently from a lot of things that I've read, uh, this is not from experience, just from what I've read will kind of like bleed, I guess, or, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you know, like oils and greases that will come out of it over time. And when you do a mirror shine on, and I guess it doesn't hold very well, it kind of turns milky or separates. So I purposely did not do like a mirror shine on them, but I think they came out very nice. Um, they could use, definitely they need heels. Soles uh, have some life left in them, could be redone. It'd be neat just to do the soles so just these, you know, things would look, you know, almost new all over. But that'll be another video for another time. But I am really pleased with the way these came out. Um, hope you like that. So... If you want to, um, you know, check out some of my other videos, obviously feel free to do so. I've got a bon bunch of other videos, shoe shoe related, and feel free to subscribe. And thank you very much, everybody, for watching. God bless, take care, and be safe out there. Yeah.